You see thumbnails like this all the time. This Alex Hormozzi one got over half a million views and it looks so simple. Wouldn't you love if you could just create things like this completely on autopilot? Well, that's what we're going to show you today using NA10 templated and a few other technologies. So templated, if you don't know, essentially it allows you to create things like this. So graphics, etc., all kind of like Canva but then it allows you to automate the template that you've just created with NA10, with make.com, Zapier, spreadsheets, and even API just using codes. You can just vibe code it as well. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can actually leverage this inside of NA10, which is an AI automation platform, and how we can then get this to automatically create and upload based simply on putting a couple of values inside of a Google Sheets. And I'll show you how this all sets up and how to get this workflow for free to use as well. So let's get into the build. So here inside NA10, we are gonna go through each one of these. These are called nodes. Now a node is just like a single portion that does something. So the first one here, this is the trigger. You can see that light, lightning bolt. I can't hover over it, oh, this comes up. But the trigger is a Google Sheets trigger. Now I've double clicked in and when you go on here, you get three sections. The middle is the settings, the left is the input, the right is the output. Now here you can see there is no input because it's a trigger. So the, the trigger triggers, that's the input. But the output is it pulls information from a Google Sheet. So we can see here I'm connected via Google Sheets. To do that, you just go click sign in. Super simple. Let's uh, close that. And then the poll times, this is how often does this trigger run? So this is every minute, you can change it to every hour, day, week, whatever you want. Documents, this is the name of your actual sheet itself. So like not your sheet, but your, like your collection of sheets, your document they call it. So this is thumbnails, this is this here. Because then you can have multiple sheets inside, so we'll click plus, there's multiple sheets. And this one's sheet one, which is reflected here. Trigger on, row added. So every time we add an entire new row here, it will then run automatically. So it gets all the data there. So video ID, handle, profile pic, and face. Now these are the specific portions we're gonna update on this template here, which I'll get to when we get to the templated one. But essentially there's a bunch of layers here and these layers all have names and these names are what I'm gonna update. So I can actually change this face to a bunch of different ones all from a Google Drive that I have as well as the other placeholder image here and the text, etc. So we come back here, we've got all that information. Let's go into the next node. So this node here is a Google Gemini node. Now, often you see in these AI um, agents on these NA10 tutorials, but they're often superfluous. They're not actually required. Agents are used to do a back and forth, go find things out, etc. Most of the time you're given an input and you just want one output. For that, you'd normally use like an LLM chain. We're gonna use Gemini because we can actually pass directly into it a YouTube URL. So we're connected here to Google Gemini, just create it the same as the other one. Video is the resource. We're gonna analyze it using 2.5 Pro because it gives the best answer. And then I have this text input. Now this is, is the input as if I was talking to ChatGPT or talking to Gemini saying give me a three word tweet from my YouTube thumbnail about this video given this transcript. An example would be stop being frugal. Each of the three words could have six letters at most. Now the reason you do that is because if you have more than six letters here they start to pour over and it doesn't work as well. Now the input type here is a video URL. So I just pass in the URL of this YouTube video. Now this YouTube video URL is just pasted in here in this first column, and that's the, the video URL. So Gemini can actually get the transcript, look through it, and then come up with this three word response for its given text AI model battle. So we can then get this information and pass it into templated. So in here now, credential, it's templated, for templated, we use an API key. To get your templated API key, let's head oops, head on over to templated, back to dashboard here. And then if you go up to you, and then we'll go to account settings. And here at the bottom, we have API key. There we go, I've hidden it now. So you can hide it here, show it. You don't want to show it and give it to anyone. 
has to be yours and only yours because as soon as you start letting people see it, they use it, it authenticates, it's like a key. Now, whoever has this can use it and pretend to be you, etc. Um, and then you can copy your API key here, bring it over, and then you just click in here, paste it in, save, boom, you're in. So operation, we want to create a render. So create an image. The format, JPEG, that's fine. Template is this uh, Hormozy tweet. I've got a couple of different templates. So if we go in to my templates, you can see I have uh, four different ones. This is just an experimental one. But here is like a, a tweet template. So a funny example for this uh, Twitter one, we have a video on it on the channel. You can go check it out. I'll link it in the description for you as well. But if you go to Alex Hormozy and you can go to his posts, you can see that he actually, there we go, seven hours ago, the exact same type of thing as my templates one. So you can see that like you could run an Alex Hormozy channel, have a few different templates like, um, like this one, for example, like this one, for example. And you could just have a few of these, rotate them, as well as then having like this here and rotate it with say like a white one. And then suddenly you now have like an entire YouTube uh, workflow which is automated. If you want to see how to do like a, a, a bigger version like that where you can create posts and thumbnails from one single workflow and schedule them and stuff, let me know because I think that could be a cool video idea. And of course you'd want to then share these posts on LinkedIn, etc. as well. So we're using that template. Now the layers here. So if we go over... Let's open up this one here. We can click on it and then we can open an editor. Now, if we open it in editor, this is where we can move stuff around just like Canva, but you have layers. Now we can double click and rename layers, you know, whatever you want, um, whatever you want. Um, and you see we have a bunch of different layers. So we name these layers inside here. So profile pick and we're passing in an image URL. So you can pass in whatever you want, text, image, colors, etc even the font if you want to change that up. So image URL, we have this one here which is pulled through from Google Sheets Trigger. So how does this exactly work? Literally, all you have to do on the left for this input, you can see we have schema, so it looks like this. We have table, looks like this. JSON is like this. So on schema, you can see the drop downs here. So these, this is a node, this is a node. Drop it down, you can see everything here. These are the easiest ones to use schema. You can just click it and drag and drop it. So we've got a profile pick here, for example, drag and drop it over and boom, that's it in there. It will now get that value that it brings in every time. Now my profile picture here, inside of sheets, you can see it's this profile images, blah, 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 twimg.com. What is that? So if you go to X, this is just a good example of how you can do this, but you can actually go to your profile and you can see your profile picture here. If you click on that, open it up. If you right click, you can copy image address. Now think about it like this. Everything on the internet is stored on a computer somewhere, some server. So it's normally accessible. You can then copy the image address, which is the specific place that it's hosted. We can then paste that in. So I'll just do it underneath so you can see. Paste it in here. It's the exact same as that. So now it can go to that URL and it can actually get your image, which is cool. Now the next one here we have is the handle, just passing that in is just text. As you can see here, you can change that because sometimes you don't want your handle to be your actual Twitter handle. You could want it to be your name. For example, for me, mine's is the look J Burn. Now, sure, there's an argument that you would want it to say the look J Burn so that it actually comes to you because then people will remember that name and they'll search it up. But on the other side, sometimes for like thumbnails, you don't even want it to be you on the thumbnail. Because for example, I have done different thumbnails before where you'll put like AWS or something as the, 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 the tweet. And if we scroll down in the text, this is we're passing in the AI model battle. So that's from this one here, just dragging that in, boom. And you notice this one says Jason at the beginning. Now that's because it's just referring to the previous node, whereas this one here has to tell you which node it actually is. So you could change this one into here and name it Analyze Video, and it would be the exact same. Then down to Face, and we have 
my face, which is this one here. Now, an idea for faces here is that I have it inside of my um, Google Drive. But here I have my face, and the way I had gotten this was in Canva, which is where I would often do designs, inside here. And for context, you can actually import Canva into Templated, which is super cool. So if you go to Templated, you can create a new template from either the gallery, you can generate it using AI, which is cool, so you can be like, make me a, a, a Twitter YouTube thumbnail, and it'll generate something for you, or import from Canva, where you can actually paste in the public view link, which is pretty cool, and it shows you exactly how to do it there. On here, you can then share this and download it with this transparent background, and then it will only bring back this, that's why the back looks checkered. And from here, you can three dots here, um, Sorry, not there. Share it at the top there. And I have anyone with the link for viewer. And then you just copy that link. And then I've pasted that link in here. And boom, there you go. And that's how you can share that in. So you could rotate a few different ones for this, for example. You could name them and, and expand this out to pull based on the name, like AI model battle. Does, or is the video you know, shocking, is the video sad, is it scary, what's the sentiment, you could get Gemini to do that and then pick the name from Google Drive, which fits it best, something, you know, there's cool ways to go about this to expand it even deeper. So this all gets sent to templated, which then brings back this output. So quick side note for templated, if you've downloaded this template here, you're trying to follow along and you can't find it here, and NA10, you can see it here, but it doesn't work. You can install it. So mine says installed. You can just click install and that will be you sorted. If you don't even get that, what you can do is you can go to the admin panel. Let me cancel or stay here. But you can go to the admin panel and you can enable these um, third party nodes. So now that we have this back, because when it runs, it will then send information up and it will bring back this render that it's created, you'll get a URL. And this URL is the image location on the internet of where um, the image actually is. And it's in an S3 bucket in AWS, um, which is Amazon Web Services Cloud. That's where the, this image now is stored for you to get. So you can see this is the image that it's created. Now, what we're going to do now that we have our image is we're going to actually upload this new thumbnail to the video itself without having to go here. So do it all programmatically, automated. So first things first, we want to get the ID. So it's a tiny little bit of code here, but you can actually use Ask AI and then you can just tell it what you want and it will write the code for you. So kind of no code still, but it's just a tiny bit and I'll explain it to you. It's better to know a little bit of code when you're doing no code so that you can even just understand what's happening under the hood and to inform your decision making better. So what does this tiny little bit of code do? Well, it sets a variable called URL and it gets the URL of the video ID, which is from the Google Sheets trigger here. It then splits it into two parts. It splits it into the first part, which is this youtube.be forward slash. And the second part is the next portion here, which you can see is returned here as video ID, which is where it returns the name of this variable, which is the split and then square brackets one. What does that mean? Well, essentially when you have something, right? So say like um, YouTube and you're to split it into you and tube, it actually starts at zero and then the next one is one. So it's returning the second portion, which is um, the, the placement of one returns that video ID, which we need to upload the new thumbnail. So the next thing we do is we actually download the thumbnail. So here we have this HTTP node. So it's HTTP request and it's a get request. So it's saying get whatever is at this URL, which is this JPEG here. And then it'll bring that back and we can view it actually in here. And we can also download that directly and it will get this image and then we'll upload that new thumbnail. Now, the reason that we do this first, I'll get to all of this bit in a second, but the reason that we actually do this here specifically, so just before this new thumbnail, we download it instead of downloading it, say here, is because when we pass this file, so this thumbnail, 
in, we do it as a binary file, binary being zeros and ones, which is just like how files are made up. And this input data field name is called data, which is the name here, data. Now, I just wanted to point that out because you can, and I've done it before, download this like over here and then re refer back to it. But it's a bit of a nightmare. You need to save the name, all this stuff, which you know you don't want to be doing. So anyway, you have that there. That's what you're passing in to upload. The top we have post, so we're saying put this data in, essentially. And uh, we have this URL, which is the Google API, upload YouTube, V3, thumbnails, and then set at this video ID equals, and we're passing in that value here. As you can see, what it, this is what it renders as. Um, and then for credentials, that's a cool thing that NA10 have just brought out, which is the ability to use your actual saved credentials inside NA10. So you don't have to now go and go and get your API key, bring it back in, because Google API keys are a nightmare because it's all embedded into Google Cloud. So you can't just use it like a nice, normal, like templated API key where you can just go to your settings and then it's down the bottom here. Instead, you have to go through the cloud system and you have to get a client secret and a client key and all this stuff. It's, it is a nightmare. Trust me. I'm a cloud engineer by day and even I don't like doing it. So next here, we have our headers. We'll just say in the content type we're passing in is an image and I actually say PNG here, but you can see that it's actually JPEG. So image slash JPEG. So we'll change that JPEG there, but it doesn't really make any difference because this is just you telling the server what to expect. Um, but they know it's an image, so it's fine. And then when it runs that, it'll go and publish that and push it up, and then that's you done. And it will then upload this brand new thumbnail to your video, and it is as simple as that. So as I said, with templated, it's amazing. You can set it up to do a bunch of different things, thumbnails, posts, carousels, even a bunch of stuff, which is cool. Now, some enhancement here, which I think would be handy, and it you know, I'd need to mention it, is RSS feeds. Now, an RSS feed, isn't that for podcasts? Well, no, an RSS feed essentially is just a feed of updates from a web page. So you can actually create an RSS feed for, say, your YouTube channel. And what that will allow us to do is instead of having this Google Sheets trigger, we could instead say, if we search trigger, RSS, there we go, RSS feed trigger, and this here, we can just give it a feed URL. So if we go over here, you can see that we have a feed URL for my YouTube channel. And you just paste that in. And then whenever I make, upload a new video, it will make um, an RSS update, which will then hit here. And it's the same kind of thing with polling. So you can see here that poll times mode every minute. So every minute it will check for a new upload, for example, or a new event in this RSS feed. Um, and then from there, it could trigger this to all run automatically. So you could create your thumbnail and for the length of time that it takes to do all of this, which honestly, the bottleneck is actually using Gemini to get the transcript. So if you had the transcript already, you could speed this up even more. But anyway, this would just take like a couple of minutes, like definitely within two minutes, you would have a thumbnail uploaded sorted. RSS feed triggers, definitely worth having it. To set them up, really all you have to do is if you just go to like rss.app and then you can just get started now, you just paste in a URL and then it will generate some uh, RSS and you may have to sign up. It's like $9 a month. I'm not sure. If you want to see a video covering that, let me know. Um, I have done it in a previous video for other stuff, so it'd be cool to use it in this use case. Um, but yeah, Use templated, honestly, going for all templated in any 10 right now is my go-to. If you want to see templated with any other type of integration, so whether that's like Zapier, Make.com, or even using code, let me know. If you have any other cool use cases, let me know what you're doing and what you would like to see, and I can create it on the channel here for you. So if you enjoyed the video, give it a like, comment, all that good stuff, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.